Okay, so I think we're going to talk today a, a little bit about noise in the NICU environment. Um, as we know, noise is an undesirable sound with uh, some negative effects. And sound can be defined as a vibration that has two main components. The first is the frequency or pitch that is measured in hertz. And we know that humans can hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. The second is loudness or sound pressure and is usually expressed in decibels. Increments in sound pressure uh, using this scale are not linear, uh, but logarithmic, and therefore absolute changes in loudness can vary depending on the frequency of sound, uh, doubling probably every four to 10 decibels. Um, sound can produce some physiological effects on the fetus quite early in gestation. Um, even as early as 23 to 25 weeks. Um, the fetal acoustic environment is by no means silent, but is constituted uh, mainly by low frequency digestive and maternal voice sounds. Uh, these sometimes very attenuated sounds in utero are transmitted to the fetus through amniotic fluid to the bones in the skull in comparison uh, an infant born prematurely is no longer surrounded by this liquid and is forced to hear by air conduction in contrast to a bone uh, conduction with a very, very immature hearing system. This uh, is a very important change and I don't think we still completely understand all the implications that these differences could have on development. What we do know <clears throat> is that the hearing impairment is diagnosed at least 20 times more frequently in the premature infant than in the general pediatric population. And there's also some evidence that suggests that noise can synergize with other negative variables in the NICU environment to produce hearing impairment in these very, very premature uh, babies. Um, and we also know that these uh, infants spend sometimes weeks and maybe even months in a very acoustically contaminated environment. The NICU can be extremely loud. The sound levels in, in many NICUs um, frequently exceed by far the maximum uh, acceptable level of 45 decibels recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics um, and have a much broader spectrum of frequencies um, shifting towards the higher pitches. Uh, compared to the low frequency sounds that the baby uh, or the fetus is exposed in utero. Um, we are increasing every day the number of high pitched alarms and many other uh, noise producing devices uh, daily in our NICUs. And um, we, know, we know that um, noise can have many negative effects in, in these very immature infants, such as apnea, hypoxemia, alteration in oxygen saturation, increased oxygen consumption, secondary to elevated heart and respiratory rates, and therefore uh, decrease the amount of calories available for growth. Um, there's been some uh, evidence uh, publicated lately and a recently published Cochrane review showed um, a clear trend for better growth and neurodevelopment um, when active noise reduction uh, interventions were used in, in premature infants. <clears throat> I think although we have some awareness of noise contamination in the NICUs, um, there is still a huge amount of room for improvement. In some units, we are using ambient sound monitoring devices to create consciousness in the staff and parents. Um, this is a starting point, but uh, most, most NICUs will only monitor uh, this acutely, which makes it um, very difficult to implement any changes to reduce noise. We also have to ask ourselves if we are monitoring noise where it really matters, and that is right next to the baby. We should be interested in um, seeing or hearing what happens uh, right next to the baby, maybe even inside our incubators and know exactly and monitor what level of noise they're being exposed to and probably actively react to those results with some um, 
noise reduction policies or, or interventions. Um, as we know, in utero, um, babies are exposed to maternal voice and, and mothers will almost instinctively uh, talk to the babies when pregnant. We know that in utero, the mother's voice, um, among other many uh, other uh, stimuli, promote maturation of the sensory system and probably contribute to normal fetal development. The fetus will hear the filtered uh, mother's voice and simultaneously receive other stimuli uh, such as the moving diaphragm and other vibrations while she's speaking. Um, in animal models, for example, it causes uh, the newborn quail not to recognize their mother, for example. So it, it seems to be very important. In NICU environment, the premature baby is for one part deprived of normal acoustic stimuli and low frequency sounds uh, inside the uterus, and for the other exposed to potentially harmful noise. Mothers of premature infants will almost invariably interact with their uh, babies and they will talk softly and frequently sing to their infants, even if they perceive there's a barrier in between them, uh, such as the incubator. Although we would intuitively think that this almost instinctive and nature, nat natural behavior uh, should be beneficial, there is very little evidence uh, to support uh, what the exposure or the non-exposure to maternal voice in premature infants can actually cause. Um, there are many um, limitations on how these problems uh, can be addressed since depriving any group of infants from maternal voice would definitely not be acceptable. Um, some studies have compared the use of exposing the infant additionally to recordings of maternal voice uh, and just a few have explored um, how preterm infants uh, have uh, any ability to differentiate between maternal and non-familiar voices. Although um, <clears throat> most of these studies didn't demonstrate any measurable uh, benefits, we have to acknowledge that um, all the infants were exposed to um, recordings and uh, most of them with um, a sound levels above the recommendations for our NICU environment. I think this highlights the fact that whatever sound intervention we use clinically or for research purpose must be definitely within levels uh, that uh, do not increase the risk of, of, of harming the baby. Um, so we have to be a little bit careful about these things.